And isn't our God mighty? He is an awesome God. Yes, now we'd just like to welcome Dion Mitchell Thank from you. Word of Flame Community Church in Brooklyn, New York. And Dion, you're the first lady. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about being a first lady. Well, what can I say? Being a first lady is an awesome task. Uh, it is definitely a calling. When God called your husband to be an pastor, he also called you. Because if you don't accept that as a calling, there's no way you'll be effective. You are absolutely right about that. Many people, do you find that it's a challenge, though, being a first lady? Because, you know, sometimes just having the pastor there, he is definitely the person that everyone sees. Just tell me a little bit about that feeling that you sometimes go through. Absolutely, and, and that's why I totally believe that a first lady must first accept the calling, believe that when God called her husband to be a pastor, that God also called her, because there is no way that you could lead with your husband without acknowledging that I was called as well, you know, because the task, it's so overwhelm overwhelming at times that you need to know that God is with you and that God has empowered you to do this. And once you know that God has empowered you to go ahead with this, you have that strength, you have that courage, you are Absolutely. motivated, and you are able to go forth and do whatever it is. Sometimes it is challenging. A lot of times you're going to go through difficult things, and there are times when you don't know what to do, and that's when you have to dig deep within yourself. Absolutely. That's when you have to pull out everything that God has poured in within you, all the resources, because I totally believe that if God has placed you in a place to do his work, then he's going to give you the resources to Amen. carry out that work effectively. Amen, and I do believe that as well. I also want to just quickly say that, you know, being in ministry, it's like you said, it's a tough task. How has that impacted your relationship with your husband? Because it's, it's just really tough being in this sort of, if you will, spotlight. I think that's a question that a lot of people tend to sidestep. It's not an area that people like to talk about. But my husband, I must say, he is an awesome man of God. Amen. And I thank God for my husband, who is also my pastor. And uh, Pastor Rudy Mitchell he is an excellent father. We have two beautiful girls. Wonderful. And right now, he's on with the girls. That's how I'm here. <laughs> And I thank him for that. But our relationship has grown in leaps and bounds. Okay. Of course, we go through struggles just like any other marriage. And I think a lot of time people view the pastor and his relationship as though it is exempt from struggles. Oh, absolutely. You know, we are not supposed to go through struggles because he is the pastor and he's got the manual on how to have a perfect marriage. Yeah. There is no such thing as a perfect marriage. We all have issues. Mm -hmm. But I thank God for who he is. Amen. And I thank God that his ability to pour into his parishioners also give him the understanding that he needs to pour into us as a couple Absolutely. and when we go through our issues yes sometimes it's difficult but he knows that you have to pour into me you know you have to take time for us to evaluate what's going on at home Absolutely. and see what is it that you need to do what is it that we need to do as a couple to mend what may have been broken to to make sure that we are not overspent in a particular area or to make sure that the church is not taking up so much of time. our time that we don't have time for each other. Even though there may be time when uh, things like that happen, but on the other hand, we have to look at it and say, okay, babe, I call him babe. That's good. <laughs> okay, babe, you know, you may be spending too much time in this area, and he's so good in listening that he would say, honey, I understand, I understand what you're saying, but we're gonna make up for that, we're gonna make up for that. Wonderful. And we do find time, because it's absolutely imperative that we do that. If we're not able to do that, then what's been happening in the secular world, it's gonna creep into our home, and we know that. So we have to make time for ourselves and our relationship, and we have to be honest. Absolutely. You know, we have to truly to be honest because in, in counseling and listening to other married couples and even the people who have been married for, for years and years, you, you find that even in the bedroom, people are not honest. Mm -hmm. You know, people are 
hide in things from each other. Absolutely. And it's beyond me how you could hide things from your life partner. But somehow, people find a way to do that. So our promise to each other is that we have to be transparent. Absolutely. You know, we have to make sure that whatever is in my heart, you know You're able it. to share. So let me exactly. ask you this. Are you able, his parishioners, they come to him for counseling. And he just drops everything to come and counsel or to counsel those parishioners, which he should. That is a part of his calling. My question to you, have you ever had to go to him and say, honey, babe, can you counsel me? I've got some issues. I've got some situations. I've got some things that I need to talk about, not necessarily as your wife, but as a parishioner, he being your pastor. <laughs> well, absolutely. Absolutely. I think... Uh with every married couple, you first have to be friends. Oh, absolutely. You know, and sometimes, of course, when he steps, when he comes home, he has to take off that pastoral cap. You're now my husband. So you're not calling him Pastor Rudy Mitchell. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank God no, for that. No, absolutely not. <laughs> but he's not my husband, and he's my children's father. So he's daddy, and he's babe. You know, he's absolutely. no longer pastor. So whatever it is that I am in need of, mm -hmm. You know, I'll sit on the side of the bed, and uh, he's a lover of everything that's sports, football, basketball, baseball, you name it. And I've grown to love those things as well. So I'll sit with him, and I'll say, you know, I need to talk to you about this. And we'll find time to talk while we're watching a game. Good. You know, and even with the girls. Sometimes they have issues, you know, as young as they are. It's crazy today. But my seven-year-old, as young as she is, Lauren, 10 years old, she has things that she needs us to talk. Absolutely. You know, so we have to make that time. So the question now that I have for you is how do you juggle all of that? and still work full-time because you are not a full-time, well, you're a full-time pastor's wife, yes, but you're also a full-time uh, employee for the Board of Education. So tell me how do you juggle that as well? That is, is rather difficult. It is extremely difficult, but with God, all things are possible. Absolutely. You know, I have to be able to balance my time extremely well, you know, and the Word of God teaches you how to do that. You know, prioritize what's important to you. Absolutely. And, and God teaches us how to put things in priority. You know, our home comes before everything. Absolutely. Our home comes before the church. Absolutely. You know, it teaches us that. Make sure. And my first responsibility is to my home. To Absolutely. make sure that my children are taken care of. So, when I'm up in the morning, you know, I'm an early riser and I go to bed extremely early as well. But... My prayer life has to be in order. Absolutely. Because once you start the day with prayer, going before God and say, God, show me how to go throughout this day. Show me what it is that I need to do. But also, I need to know that praying without work, without doing some things, without uh, doing a to-do list, which Absolutely. is vital for me, you know, there's certain things that I set up in my day to make sure my day flows well. And my to-do list is a part of it. I have a lot of gadgets, mm. you know, things that buzz, you know, little alarms that constantly keep buzzing to let me know, okay, time for you to do this, time for you to do that, because I'm a time person. Absolutely. I'm a time on task. I have so, to So let me constantly. say this real quickly, that our God is a God of decency and order. He yes. believes in order. Yes. So the recommendation for pastors, for pastors' wives, for just people, is to make sure that they put their lives in order. And there must be a, stru a structure that prioritize, we Prioritize, absolutely, especially okay. if you're a working mom. Right. You know, if you're a working mom and you also have the ministry to take care of as well, you have to know what's important and what comes first. You know, a lot of times we, we waste a tremendous amount of time, we spend a tremendous amount of time uh, watching TV, not to say that you don't need some downtime, right. but how much downtime? We can't tend take the entire day just sitting there not doing anything. I have my day when I'm going to do laundry, my day when I'm going to do my shopping, and of course at a certain time in the day I know I must be home because I have to do homework with the girls. Absolutely. And then there's certain people that I also delegate things to. Okay. And I'm calling to say, okay, did we get this done? 
Okay, how could you email? Thank God for technology. Technology mm -hmm. make your life so much easier. Absolutely. So there are a lot of things that God has afforded us that we can also use to help us to work more efficiently. The key is finding ways to help you to work smarter, not to work harder. harder. And you know. unfortunately, that's what a lot of churches are doing because they're so consumed with the ministry. And it's wonderful because God wants us to give him everything. Mm -hmm. However, like you said, it's to prioritize that, to give structure, to give order to that. Absolutely. And if we fail to do that, then we have chaos. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I have another quick question for you. What, if any... Uh, there's many lessons, of course, that one can take away from being a pastor's wife. Mm -hmm. um, but what is probably the most valuable at this particular stage in ministry, in your life, and just in the whole, just encapsulating all of ministry? What would you say that one valuable hmm. lesson would be? Wow, there's so many lessons. But uh, I think as a pastor's wife, there are so many demands that are placed upon you that you have to get to a place where you are confident in yourself. Mm. You must be confident with self. Absolutely. And get to that place where you are able to say no. You know, because there's so you many... You mean the N-O? Yes. In caps, the... <laughs> yes. Okay. I mean, no, the, that two-letter word, no. But how you say it is also important. You have to be very tactful. Absolutely. And uh, you have to know who you're talking to as well. You have to know your people, your parishioners, and how they'll take things. Because you may have someone in your church who is going through a healing process. This person may have gone through abuse or whatever the case may be, and this person has grown to depend upon you. But in the process, that person is also bleeding you, mm. you know, and you need some time for yourself. And you need to say to this person, not right now. Right. You know, but not in, ever, but you know, <laughs> definitely just not right now. Not right now. But in doing so, you have to find a way to do that where you're not hurting that person because you know right. that person might take that as a rejection. Mm. But you don't want it to be perceived that way. Right. So you have to be extremely tactful in terms of how you go about saying no. Absolutely. So I've learned how to say no because for my own health, for my own benefit, I have to know when enough is enough for me. Absolutely. And when is it I need to step back because that actually is one of my coping mechanisms that I've put in my little toolbox. Okay. You know, I have to develop a toolbox, <laughs> a toolkit of things that I pull out when I need, you know, to cope with different Absolutely. things. And sometimes you're, you're just so burdened mm -hmm. and you need some time for self. You need some time to get away a little bit. And you have to be able to say, I am so sorry, but I can't do this right now. Absolutely. And... Uh, most people are usually compliant with you, but there are others who just want your every attention, and you can't be all things to all people. So those needy people. Yes, and you have you have needy people, and you know there's nothing wrong with having needy people. Okay, expound on that, please. <laughs> I mean. God sends us to the needy people. You Absolutely. know, he wants us to service those people. He wants us to reach out and to heal those people. But in the process of doing that, we ourselves, we have to be careful that we don't overextend ourselves. Absolutely. And sometimes we become overextended, especially if you are a full-time mom, you are working full-time, and then you are standing side by side with your husband in the ministry. Absolutely. It's it's a lot. And it's you a yourself, lot to juggle. Yeah. And yourself, you're a human being, so you have to come up with your own coping mechanisms. Absolutely. What do you do when it becomes too much for you? Mm -hmm. You know, what do you do when you sense within yourself that, okay, I need a timeout, you know? Okay, I'm going to ask you this quick question. Are you going to the spa? <laughs> <laughs> you know, are you doing things like that? Because that's necessary. Oh, I, my I do goodness. believe that there should be, you know, in the budget, <laughs> whether it be the home budget or the church budget, some time Absolutely. for you to just take that time, go to the spa, take mini vacations. Absolutely. Let me tell you something. My girls, are they love it. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they will put on their doors, Mommy, it's spa day, okay. and sometime we'll have our own little in-house spa. Okay. You know, we'll fill the, ba the bathtub, and we'll do a little bubble baths. We'll create our own little ambiance with candles okay. and do our own little manicure and pedicure. But sometimes, yes, we'll treat ourselves, and we'll go out, and we'll have right. a professional take care of us. But all, we all need to do that. 
Absolutely. We all need to do that every now and then to take care of ourselves because it's a requirement. All right. It's a need. It's absolute. Yes. It's like the truth. It must be done. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, one of the things that I know about ministry, I'm just thanking God for uh, being a part of such a wonderful church, having an awesome pastor, myself and husband. Yes. Um, that, you know, sometimes just the tearing of ministry. Yes. Ministry can really tear the fiber of the relationship sometimes because, as I said earlier, sometimes it's so hard to uh, break away from what God has called, actually all of it he's called us to, mm -hmm. to be a husband, to be a wife, Absolutely. to be a pastor, to yes. be a first lady, to be a mother, mm -hmm. to be a father, all of that he's called us to. But it sometimes can just really tear at the fiber. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to a pastor's wife? A family right now mm -hmm. that's in need of just mending some sort of healing Absolutely. in order to make sure that they don't completely allow it to tear them apart. Now the fibers just, you know, it's 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 grinding, but mm -hmm. it's not quite yet there, you know. Yes. So, you know, in the corporate world, they they always say that you know it's lonely at the top. The same is is true for pastors and their wives. It is lonely at the top. It is. Because a lot of the things that you go through, you can't really go and sit down with anyone and just pour out your heart, mm -hmm. you know? And it's sometimes I find that to be sad, where a lot of things that I go through, uh, I, I have to keep it within myself and my journals. You know, mm -hmm. I thank God for journaling. So what I would say to a pastor's wife, you know, is that you need to develop your, your toolkit. A toolkit of coping mechanisms, mm -hmm. you know, things that you have in place that when you are going through that you could go to to say, this is what's going to help me now. For me, it's my journals. Okay. When I need someone to talk to and I know this is an issue that, you know, I have to, to, to take to God, mm -hmm. but when I need that voice, it's my journals. Um, music is therapeutic for me. Okay. Um, now, do you sing? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. No, I don't sing. Okay, I, so you're just listening to people like Todd Delaney. Yes. Okay. Well, you know, different type of songs. Uh, I never would have made it. Okay. <laughs> All right. That one is a pretty good one. Wonderful. But music is very, ther very therapeutic. Absolutely. So I would say develop that toolkit. Absolutely. You know, things that you could draw from and learn to delegate things. Find people in your church that you could depend on, that you could ask for help when you need it. Wonderful. Well, First Lady Mitchell, I want to say that it's a pleasure. It was Thank a pleasure you. to have you today on the Praise Thank the Lord you for program. Me. Thank you. You have inspired us. You have helped and us. So have you. you have allowed Thanks. us to. Matter of fact, I'm going to take home with me that coping, the, the coping mechanism. I believe that every every church family, the pastor and his wife, ought to have something like that. Right now, I just want to ask you real quickly if you would just do us a wonderful favor. And I do believe that uh, praying is a time where we get to speak to the Lord, but he also gets a chance to just hear our, our deepest hurts, the times that we're just not going, you know, when, we, when we're going through things that don't necessarily feel right. So right now, would you just take the time to just pray for the first ladies all over the world, all over the country, and just, you know, see what the Lord has in store for them Absolutely. and their lives going forward. God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you this hour, Lord God. God, you know the women that you've called to work alongside with their husbands, Lord Father God. Father, this hour I pray in the name of Jesus that you will pour out a fresh anointing upon them, Lord God. Empower them, Lord Father. Amen. Help them to understand, Lord God, that they were called with their husbands, Lord Father God. Father, if they don't have that toolkit, Lord Father, with resources, Lord Father, in place for times, Lord God, when they're going to go through issues, Lord God, lead them into that path, Lord Father, where they will develop it, Lord Father God, where people will pour into them, Lord Father God. Father, I pray, Lord God, for every woman, Lord God, that is serving in ministry, Amen. Lord Father God, that you will continue to be that lamp unto her feet, Lord Father God. God, you know where they are, Lord Father God, and you know what their needs are, Lord God. I pray that your power, Lord God, will rain down upon them this moment 
in the name of Jesus. And again, First Lady Dion Mitchell, thank you so much. Thank you. I believe that those prayers were heard, and not only were they heard by our Heavenly Father, but they were felt by our listeners. Thank and again, you. thank you for joining us at the Praise the Lord program. It was my pleasure. I want to thank Todd Dulaney and the clip, You're Mighty. We had an awesome show today. I pray that you were blessed, and I pray that you'll join us next time. We're so glad you've been with us for Praise the Lord. TBN has a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So write today. Praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Or in Canada, write TBN, P.O. Box 768, Station B, Ottawa, Ontario, K1P 5P8. If you haven't asked Christ into your life, Call our prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Now until next time, remember to praise the Lord.